In complexity theory, the class NC for Nix class is the set of decision problems decidable in polylogarithmic time on a parallel computer with a polynomial number of processors. In other words, a problem is in NC if there exist constants C and K such that it can be solved in time O -N using O -N -K parallel processors. Stephen Cook coined the name, Nix class, after Nick Pippinger, who had done extensive research on circuits with polylogarithmic depth and polynomial size, just as the class P can be thought of as the tractable problems Cobham's thesis, so NC can be thought of as the problems that can be efficiently solved on a parallel computer. NC is a subset of P because polylogarithmic parallel computations can be simulated by polynomial time sequential ones. It is unknown whether NC equals P, but most researchers suspect this to be false, meaning that there are probably some tractable problems that are «inherently sequential» and cannot significantly be sped up by using parallelism. Just as the class NP-complete can be thought of as «probably intractable», so the class P-complete, when using NC reductions, can be thought of as «probably not parallelizable» or «probably inherently sequential». The parallel computer in the definition can be assumed to be a parallel, random access machine pram. That is a parallel computer with a central pool of memory, and any processor can access any bit of memory in constant time. The definition of NC is not affected by the choice of how the pram handles simultaneous access to a single bit by more than one processor. It can be CRCW, CRU, or EREW. See PRAM for descriptions of those models. Equivalently, NC can be defined as those decision problems decidable by a uniform Boolean circuit which can be calculated from the length of the input. For NC, we suppose we can compute the Boolean circuit of size n in logarithmic space in n with polylogarithmic depth and a polynomial number of gates. RNC is a class extending NC with access to randomness. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Problems in NC. As with P, by a slight abuse of language, one might classify function problems and search problems as being in NC. NC is known to include many problems, including integer addition, multiplication and division matrix multiplication, determinant, inverse, rank polynomial GCD, by a reduction to linear algebra using Sylvester matrix finding a maximal matching, often algorithms for those problems had to be separately invented and could not be naively adapted from well-known algorithms, Gaussian elimination and Euclidean algorithm rely on operations performed in sequence. One might contrast ripple carry adder with a carry lookahead adder. The NC hierarchy NCI is the class of decision problems decidable by uniform Boolean circuits with a polynomial number of gates of at most two inputs and depth O log n, or the class of decision problems solvable in time O log n on a parallel computer with a polynomial number of processors. Clearly, we have n c 1 n c 2 n c i n c display style m a t h s f n c caret 1 subset x m a t h s f n c caret 2 subset x c d o t s subset x m a t h s f n c caret i subset x c d o t s m a t h s f n c which forms the NC hierarchy. We can relate the NC classes to the space classes L and NL and AC. N 
C one L N L A C one N C two P Display style M A T H S F N C carrot one subsetac M A T H S F L subsetac M A T H S F N L subsetac M A T H S F A C carrot one subsetac M A T H S F N C carrot two subsetac M A T H S F P the NC classes are related to the AC classes, which are defined similarly, but with gates having unbounded fan in. For each I, we have N C I A C I N C I plus one Display style M A T H S F N C carrot I subsetac M A T H S F A C carrot I subsetac M A T H S F N C carrot I plus one. As an immediate consequence of this, we have that N C equals A C. It is known that both inclusions are strict for I equals zero. Similarly, we have that NC is equivalent to the problems solvable on an alternating Turing machine restricted to at most two options at each step with O log N space and log N O one Display style log N carrot O one alternations. Topic: Open problem. Is NC proper? One major open question in complexity theory is whether or not every containment in the NC hierarchy is proper. It was observed by Papadimitriou that if NC i topic NC i plus one for some i, then NC i. NCJ for all JI, and as a result, NCI equals NC. This observation is known as NC hierarchy collapse because even a single equality in the chain of containments N C 1 N C 2 Display style M A T H S F N C carrot one subsetac M A T H S F N C carrot two subsetac C D O T S implies that the entire N C hierarchy collapses down to some level i. Thus, there are two possibilities: N C one N C i N C I plus J N C display style M A T H S F N C carrot one subset C D O T S subset M A T H S F N C carrot I subset C D O T S subset M A T H S F N C carrot I plus J subset C D O T S M A T H S F N C N C one equals equals N C I equals equals N C I plus J equals N C Display style M A T H S F N C carrot one equals C D O T S equals M A T H S F N C carrot I equals C D O T S equals M A T H S F N C carrot I plus J equals C D O T S M A T H S F N C 
It is widely believed that one is the case, although no proof as to the truth of either statement has yet been discovered. Topic: <laughs> Barrington's theorem. A branching program with n variables of width k and length m consists of a sequence of m instructions. Each of the instructions is a tuple i, p, q, where i is the index of variable to check 1 i n, and p and q are functions from 1, 2 k to 1, 2 k. Numbers 1, 2 k are called states of the branching program. The program initially starts in state 1, and each instruction I, P, Q changes the state from x to p x or q x, depending on whether the ith variable is 0 or 1. A family of branching programs consists of a branching program with n variables for each n. It is easy to show that every language L on 0, 1 can be recognized by a family of branching programs of width 5 and exponential length, or by a family of exponential width and linear length. Every regular language on 0, 1 can be recognized by a family of branching programs of constant width and linear number of instructions since a DFA can be converted to a branching program. BWBP denotes the class of languages recognizable by a family of branching programs of bounded width and polynomial length. Barrington's theorem says that BWBP is exactly non uniform NC1. The proof uses the nonsolvability of the symmetric group S5. The theorem is rather surprising. For instance, it implies that the majority function can be computed by a family of branching programs of constant width and polynomial size, while intuition might suggest that to achieve polynomial size, one needs a linear number of states. <laughs> Proof of Barrington's theorem A branching program of constant width and polynomial size can be easily converted via divide and conquer to a circuit in NC1. Conversely, suppose a circuit in NC1 is given. Without loss of generality, assume it uses only an and not gates. Lemma 1 If there exists a branching program that sometimes works as a permutation P and sometimes as a permutation Q, by right multiplying permutations in the first instruction by α, and in the last instruction left multiplying by β, we can make a circuit of the same length that behaves as β P α or β Q α, respectively. Call a branching program α computing a circuit C if it works as identity when C's output is 0, and as α when C's output is 1. As a consequence of lemma 1 and the fact that all cycles of length 5 are conjugate, for any two 5 cycles α, β, if there exists a branching program α computing a circuit C, then there exists a branching program β computing the circuit C, of the same length. Lemma 2 There exist 5 cycles γ, delta such that their commutator ε equals gdg 1 delta 1 is a 5 cycle. For example, γ. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, delta 1 3 5 4 2 giving epsilon equals 1 3 2 5 4 we will now prove barrington's theorem by induction suppose we have a circuit c which takes inputs x1 xn and assume that for all subcircuits d of c and 5 cycles alpha there exists a branching program alpha computing d we will show that for all 5 cycles alpha there exists a branching program alpha computing c if the circuit c simply outputs some input bit xi the branching program we need has just one instruction checking xi's value 0 or 1 and outputting the identity or alpha respectively 
If the circuit C outputs A for some different circuit A, create a branching program α1 computing A and then multiply the output of the program by α. By lemma 1, we get a branching program for A outputting the identity or α, i.e. α computing A equals C. If the circuit C outputs A B for circuits A and B, join the branching programs that gamma compute A, delta compute B, gamma minus one compute A, and delta minus one compute B for a choice of five cycles gamma and delta such that their commutator epsilon equals GDG minus one delta minus one is also a five cycle. The existence of such elements was established in lemma two. If one or both of the circuits outputs Zero, the resulting program will be the identity due to cancellation. If both circuits output 1, the resulting program will output the commutator epsilon. In other words, we get a program epsilon computing AB. Because epsilon and alpha are two five cycles, they are conjugate, and hence there exists a program alpha computing AB by lemma 1, by assuming the subcircuits have branching programs so that they are alpha computing for all five cycles alpha element of S5, we have shown C also has this property, as required. The size of the branching program is at most 4D, where D is the depth of the circuit. If the circuit has logarithmic depth, the branching program has polynomial length. <laughs> Notes <laughs>